Welcome, I'm Marlon Williams, and we're just going to be doing a little bit of video tutorial today. Uh, we're going to be thinking about the relationship between elasticity, taxes, and dead weight loss. It might be quite apparent why the government would tax products such as alcohol and cigarette far more than they would tax other products. If we think about it from a sin tax perspective, then what the government is really doing is trying to get us to reduce the amount of these goods that we consume by sort of indirectly increasing the price. And secondly, if the government is really interested in getting as much tax revenue as it possibly can, then what better way to do it than to tax a good that people are addicted to? So let's go ahead and t think about it a little bit more in depth between the relationship between elasticity, taxes, and dead weight loss. So we're just gonna be starting with a basic setup, basic demand and supply analysis, Econ 101. We have our standard upward sloping supply function, but we have a vertical demand function. That's not the usual. Some of us might recognize that to be a demand function where demand is perfectly inelastic. It's sort of a theoretical extreme that we don't really see in our wor real world, good real world examples. But if we understand what's happening in this theoretical extreme, then sort of the intermediate, usual cases are far easier for us to understand. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be assuming this theoretical extreme of perfectly inelastic demand. We're going to ask the question, who bears the brunt of the burden and what sort of deadweight loss comes about in this case? And we're sort of going to generalize that to other cases. That doesn't always work with economic analysis, but in this case, it does. So standard upward sloping supply function, vertical demand function based on demand being perfectly inelastic, saying to us, no matter what the price of the good is, low price, high price, consumers want just a fixed amount of the good. You can think about something like a life-saving drug. No matter what the price of the good is, you want it. You're going to buy it. Okay? So in this case, let's just attach a number to it. 50. Or standard upward slope in supply function or vertical demand function, it gives us an equilibrium price of where they intersect of $10. So this is the equilibrium price where the government hasn't intervened. Let's allow the government to intervene. The government now says... For every unit of the good that you sell, I want $5. We have a per unit tax of $5. How do we represent this in our standard demand and supply analysis? Think about it this way. The supply function can be interpreted in this way. Tell me how many units of the good you want to buy. I, the firm, will tell you the minimum price I'm willing to sell you that quantity for. So in this case, you want 50 units, trace it up, hits the supply function there. The minimum I'm willing to sell you 50 units for is at a price of $10. But now the government says each unit of the good that you sell, $5 don't belong to you, the supplier. It belongs to us, the government. If the firm really was saying $10 was his original minimum, then now the firm is simply going to say, consumers, if you want this good, 50 units of this good, you now have to pay me $15 because five of it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the government. And we could make the same analysis about all quantity levels. Give me a quantity, originally I wanted a given price, now I want $5 more, because $5 that used to belong to me no longer does. That can be interpreted simply as a supply function, in a sense, shifting up by the amount of the tax. Our new equilibrium point must be where our new supply function intersects with our unchanged demand function. So what do we get? We get a new price, price after the government imposes a tax of $15.
it's not unsurprising that the after the tax price is now exactly $5 more. Why? Because quantity does not respond to price changes. In this theoretical extreme of demand being perfectly inelastic, no matter what the price of the good is, consumers buy exactly the same amount, which therefore means firms being rational and profit maximizers simply originally we were getting ten dollars no we're just going to pass on that five dollar tax direct to the consumers because they do not respond to price changes that's our new point price of 15 unchanged quantity of 50. so the question that we now want to ask is well <coughs> What is the overall welfare impl implications? The question we're asking really is, is there a dead weight loss? Meaning, is there some sort of reduction in the total surplus, the total welfare that this market creates as a result of the tax? More generally, dead weight loss would result from any sort of government intervention or ineffic inefficiency. In this case, the intervention that we're interested in is a tax increase. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We're trying to assess, does total surplus change? And from our previous discussions, we know that our total surplus is just going to be our consumer surplus plus or producer surplus, consumers, producers, but now we have a third agent that's in our economy, that's the government. So we're going to now add what or tax revenue. Because money in the hands of the government we're viewing as a good thing. So let's now think about how these things change. We're trying to find out if there's a reduction in our total surplus. So let's just go ahead and think of this as change in total surplus would just be the change in consumer surplus plus the change in producer surplus plus the change in tax revenue. Let's think about it. The result that we're going to find is that there's actually no dead weight loss in this case where demand is perfectly inelastic. Let's see why. <clears throat> Recognize firstly that the net price, meaning the price that the firm gets to take home, is unchanged. Originally, it was able to sell each unit of its good for $10. Now it sells the good for $15. That's what the consumers pay but $5 belong to the government, and so what the firm really takes home is still the $10. So from a producer standpoint, they are unaffected. They're selling the same quantity of goods, getting the same price or same take-home price, so that goes. That is zero. So what we're left with is, it's going to be the change in consumer surplus plus the change in tax revenue. But guess what? Recognize here that the tax revenue is exactly the reduction in consumer surplus. The consumers previously were able to buy 50 units of the good, paying $10 for each, now, each good that they buy costs them $5 more. They're getting exactly the same quantity, exactly the same quality. They're just now paying $5 more. What's happening to that money? That's just being funneled into the hands of the government. All we're having here is a redistribution of income from the consumers to the government. In a sense, no money or no, <coughs> no welfare is being lost. All it's doing 
is that there's a redistribution. So what we have is that the tax revenue, the change in the tax revenue, is just equivalent to the reduction in or consumer surplus. So we could write this as change in consumer surplus. Since these are equivalent, this would be equivalent to minus the change in consumer surplus. That gives us what we have here, which is that the dead weight loss is zero. Last thing we want to think about is who bears the brunt of the bur burden. And in this case, it's obvious. There's only one side of the market that's doing the pain. The firms are unchanged. They are selling the same amount of goods, same price. Consumers, they're the ones that are bearing the brunt. Consumers bear the entire burden of the tax because they're getting same quantity of the goods, same quality of the goods, assumed they're just now paying that $5 extra that the government has imposed. Very intuitive. Demand is perfectly inelastic. The firms recognize this. The government imposes a tax. All the firm does is simply passes on the entirety of the tax to the consumers because consumers do not respond to that price change. And what we could show is we could take it to the other extreme where we have the reverse where demand is perfectly elastic, giving us a horizontal demand function. And we could show that no, it would be the firms that are bearing the burden of the tax. Last thing, the reason that we have zero dead weight loss here is that quantity does not change. Dead weight loss generally arises when we cut back on how much we produce. In this case, where consumers do not respond to a price change because demand is perfectly inelastic, quantity does not change, which means we're producing the goods that we, in a sense, should be producing. That's it for us today, uh, talking about the relationship between elasticity, taxes, and deadweight loss. Feel free to come back and check out some other videos uh, that we'll have later on. Thanks.